Hi, I'm Keitha Hank. And I'm Miranda Cuellar, and welcome to this edition to JVTV News. Today we're going to be talking, taking a more in-depth view on several stories. Multiple CFISD schools have come together to collaborate in creating a rolling masterpiece. A super bus that proudly represents the Cypher District and personifies some of our schools. Vanessa Halaceras takes a look into the work it took to create the super bus. A super bus needs a super team. The Cypher District wanted a bus that could, one, be used in parades and fundraisers, two, you could legally drive, and three, would proudly represent CFISD for a long time. They were asking for a super bus. We met with Alyssa Trevino, um, the art teacher, as well as the auto tech teacher and the welding metal shop teacher, and just really brainstormed what we wanted this bus to become. And that's where the idea of kind of turning all the school mascots into superheroes came from that initial meeting with them. And so once that meeting was over, they just kind of ran with it. And I know they did the, the metal work and the welding first and then turned it over to um, Mr. Klaus and the uh, the auto tech and they, they did their thing and then finally the art students took over and, and did the painting. Oh, I think they really enjoyed working on it. They, you know, if there, if there was an extra day that I needed them to come down to work on it, they, they had no problem uh, coming in there. They, they looked forward to it, I felt. And, uh, seeing the pictures of it in the art carpet, uh, you could tell that they were pretty proud of it. Jersey Village Art, Auto tech and welding classes were selected to work on this project. Um, well, I had to order all the paint, painting supplies, um, just kind of coordinate with the um, welding teacher and um, auto tech teacher um, when we were going to be working on it and when my students would be down there. And then I had to get all of my students down there and make sure that we could finish it up in a timely manner. In order to meet their deadline and get the super bus to the Houston Art Car Parade, each class brought something different to the plate. Everyone did something different. We rotated the job. We uh, took off some leaf spray, made it a few inches better. We uh, sanded it, and then we ended up painting it white and just let the rest of the art stuff take care of the rest. Once the art class had the bus, they ordered the paint, met in the auto tech class, and started painting. They wanted a superhero theme so that the superintendent and other people could dress up like superheroes on the inside of the bus and then jump out and go to the <laughs> elementary schools and, and surprise the kids. So far, the super bus has been in the parade and the CFISD 25th anniversary. It is scheduled to be used in various community projects for generations to come. And of course, like any artist, once the bus was completed, the students signed it. I wanted them to be able to come back, you know, maybe come back to, um, you know, the fun run or a carnival and see the bus there, you know, 10 years down the road and, and be able to show people, hey, I worked on this. So if you're an artist, you have to leave your name on your work, so that's what they did. Vanessa Hollisteris, JVTV News. We would like to thank the Jersey Village Auto Tech Art and Welding classes for completing this awesome project. We hope to see more projects like this in the future. Up next, we will learn about a fun summer activity, but first, here's a public service announcement by Vanessa Halasteris and Rachel Morgan. fun activity to do with friends? Ellis Bullington and Austin Wallace show us how to make a cool summer craft. Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to make a galaxy shirt. It's a really cool shirt you can wear with your friends over the summer break. Here's what you need. For this project you'll need white paint, pink paint, purple paint, and different shades of blue paint. Use a brush to spread and blot your colors to make your galaxy. Glitter is always an option. 
At the end, use an old brush to splatter white paint to create a star-like effect. And that's how to make an awesome galaxy shirt. I'm Austin. And I'm Ellis. And, and we're, we're from, from JBTV, JBTV News. News. Those galaxy shirts really brought back some memories of NASA. What are they up to now? Are you kidding? What aren't they up to? Don't you know we're the official space city? Aaron Clevis launches us off into space. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. Houston, home of one of our nation's centers for space exploration, NASA, filled with men and women willing to push the boundaries of science and exploration. Since 1962, Houston's Lyndon B. Johnson Space Center has administrated training, research, and flight control for all of NASA's missions. Well, one thing, it helps broaden our knowledge. I mean, if it wasn't for what we did back in the 60s and 70s, some of the items that we have today, computers, and some of it we probably wouldn't have due to, you know, not looking into the space exploration. You know, plus, you know, someday down the road, you know, not my lifetime, probably not yours, we might have to look for another place to live, you know, and with what we do today, might be able to get us somewhere else. Well, it's always a good time to start caring. Um, whether there's a lot of people, I don't know if there's as many as there used to be, you know, because there's too many things going on in the world that are happening here, and a lot of people don't really worry about what's happening out there. With commanding lunar exploration and the world's most respected astronaut training facility under its belt, Houston looked to 1972 and the commencement of the space shuttle program to boost them back into a scientific golden age. The $196 billion price tag of the program's 30-year service life ultimately led to its retirement during the summer of 2011. In the years following the space shuttle's retirement, it seemed like our funding was disappearing and our hopes for space exploration were in the past. To answer that challenge, we created a new way for NASA to partner with the private sector to build rockets and spacecraft at a dramatically reduced cost to taxpayers. Just this last September, NASA awarded a contract to SpaceX and Boeing to build a U.S. manned spacecraft that will ferry astronauts to the International Space Station and spark the private sector's involvement in space exploration. Humanity's inherent need for exploration can be fulfilled once again. Aaron Quivers, JVTV News. We're expected to blast off to Mars by the year 2030. It's no wonder Houston is recognized as the space city. Up next, we will learn about fighting games. But first, here's a public service announcement by Alex Thompson. Miranda, I'm sure you know what a fighting game is, but do you know that some people play it competitively? What? Like a sport? Yeah, a little bit like it. Sweet Tong gives us this knockout story. A fighting game is a video game genre in which the player controls an on-screen character and fights against an opponent, often controlled by another person. Matches generally consist of several rounds, similar to a boxing match. The player who wins the most rounds wins the match. Because people usually play against other people in fighting games, they have become widely popular. I had a couple friends who introduced it to me. I thought it was kind of ridiculous at first, but then I saw like the strategies that go into it, and I got really interested. It's a really cool community to make friends. You know, you get people, you get rivals, you get people that teach you how to play. It is you learn what you learn from another. It's a really huge deal, honestly, in fighting games. You're not just alone in this type of thing. I've met many other people along the way, and I've, I've grown a huge group of friends just playing fighting games here, actually. I just like the community, really, just like everyone getting together and wanting to be better than the other person, so you're constantly just fighting and trying to learn all these combos and whatnot to be the very best you possibly can, and I just really like that, actually. People in Houston looking to seriously compete often go to a shop that hosts tournaments called Insomnia. It's a shop in the Heights, 
and once I frequented this place, I found out what the true competitive scene of video games is. We did some promotional tournaments at the beginning. We thought it would be a good way to drive business to the store, and the demand was crazy. So we thought we would do like maybe one tournament a month or something just for fun. Uh, but people were calling constantly or coming by constantly asking when the next one was. So it became obvious that there was a need in the community for that. The atmosphere is fantastic. This place is a, I guess, melting pot of all sorts of games. It's ridiculous on how many people you will meet here just playing games. I mean, everybody has a lineup in what game they're going to play and, you know, you don't know who you're going to play with next. It's just fantastic. Fighting game tournaments are highly competitive, and many people take these games very seriously. You know, you're not going to get babied around. You're either, if you do not have the skill, you're going to get broken. In tournaments, you have something on the line, like a cash prize, or, you know, a title, or maybe you could win a t-shirt, but either way, you're gambling for something. I've competed in a couple of tournaments before here. Um, I've lost a bunch of them, actually all of them. <laughs> but I learned from that, and it makes me want to continue training and actually compete for the next tournament. It's the competitiveness uh, to see if you're better than someone else. I mean, it, it sounds a bit, you know, egotistical in a way, but to see if you're better than someone else. But that's not saying because you're better at them just because you're better at them. It's because you've trained and practiced to be better. You meet a lot of new faces, like. Yeah people who you've never met before that you've never seen the way they play. So it's like a whole new experience each tournament that I compete in. So I'll meet a guy that's like from another state who plays like a certain character really well and I, I don't know how he does it. And next thing you know, I add him as a friend or he, treat, he teaches me how he plays that way. And it's just a continuous ongoing learning experience for me every single tournament I compete in. As more players take up fighting games, larger tournaments are beginning to pop up around the world such as the EVO Championship Series which hosts thousands of people. The hype is real, and that is a, you know, a saying within the gaming community. The hype is truly real. Uh, the crowd will get you in, they will have you excited. There's so much energy, and it's, it's ridiculous. It's a sight to see. And then you have Evo, just for all these fighting games, and it's the most ridiculous thing you will ever see, because groups of people, not even at Evo, show up for Evo events at a local gaming shop. I think they have a big negative stigma with parents and older people, but I think their popularity is they're going to continue to grow. The, the, the popularity in fighting games as it is now is never going to go away. It, I mean, you got people going from around the world to tournaments here in America or even Japan to compete. It's, it's never going to fade away. It's going to continue to keep growing no matter what. With its growing popularity and player base, one thing's for certain, fighting games are here to stay. Hui Tong, JVTV News. So, Keitha, are you ready to go for a round? I'll pass. <laughs> Summer is on its way, and it's time to go out and have some fun. Austin Wallace and Ellis Wellington takes us to one of the hottest hangouts in Houston. Hey, are you looking for a fun place to hang out with friends? Well then, look no further. City Center Houston is full of severe retail, elegant dining, and many open-air plazas. It is a great family-friendly area where people of all ages can have a blast. And that's why you should check City Center out. Up next, we're going to make t-shirts. I'm Ellis. And I'm Austin. From JVTV News. There are many youth programs in Houston that help kids. One of those organizations being the Boys and Girls Club. Here's Amy Chong with more. There are many young adolescents that go through difficult obstacles, but here on West Montgomery Road, they are able to attend the Boys and Girls Club. This organization provides a positive environment for them to be able to do activities such as sports, school works, arts and crafts, and so much more. When um, I first started here, there was only one other, there was only two other staff members here with 60 kids. And the one thing about, about kids is they need consistency. And without that consistency, these kids will not be able to grow properly. So one thing that really, uh, how it really impacts these kids is just by staying around, making sure that they stick with the same rules, that they stick with the same um, things that help them in order to help them be better adults whenever they grow up. Also, by helping them realize that, hey, you know, to stop the bullying, to start getting along with each other, it helps them 
realize how, how great of friends they can be. For over six decades, the Boys and Girls Club has been an area for youth development and achieving a record of education for young people in ways that positively impact their lives. Well, most of our kids, the age groups go from six to, uh, most, most of the age groups go from six to 18. Um, after they leave here, we have what's known as the Youth of the Year competition, which is where they participate in order to earn scholarship money for college. So basically, the whole time that they're here, we're trying to prep them, get them ready for you know, college and anything after, after high school, that then they know that the world is, that way then when you get out into the world, it's different. You know, we try to prepare them for that, try to make sure that they see that, you know, things aren't always given to you, sometimes you have to earn them. So we, our hope is that they learn from, from, learn from the experiences here and take it out into the real world whenever they grow up. The staff at the club helps many kids with their lives and problems. Their relationship with the kids increases because of the bond that they create, which supports a positive environment to the youth. The kids actually form really close-knit bonds with the staff members, especially the ones that have almost the exact same interests as them. Um, I, I would say at least a good, a good number of the staff here have, have those certain kids that they use for their helpers and things like that, and that helps them grow a closer, a closer bond in order to make sure that the kids are trying to uh, be all that they can be, basically. For me, it's more like, uh, <clears throat> I guess, like a mother, daughter, auntie, niece type of relationship for me or nephew. So we have guys, we have boys. Um, but from that aspect of being able to just be a lending ear and them being comfortable enough to know, like, if I tell her something, it's going to just be with her. And if I'm feeling some type of way, if I'm going through something right now, if I'm um, if I need to talk about something, if something ain't right, whether it be at school, whether it be at home, uh, whether it be just something that's interpersonal with them, just within them, they feel comfortable with talking to me. So I feel like b having that type of personality for the kids um, really helps them in their growth. It has provided a safer environment to the community in the midst of all chaotic, dangerous neighborhoods and family context which delivers higher quality program that builds up character. I start coming here since it first opened and it's like I'm getting used to like being here every day and it's like I like it here. Based on the interests and needs of the Boys and Girls Club, their mission is to inspire and enable all youth to realize full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. Amy Trong, JVTV News. Wow, it's amazing how many volunteers there are willing to help these kids stay out of trouble. I totally agree with you. You can see the positive impact that the Boys and Girls Club has on these kids' lives. Up next, we will learn about dumpster diving. But first, here's a public service announcement by Diego Gomez and Haley Bowling. Nowadays, everything is so expensive and hard to get. But have you noticed that some people have other ways of collecting items? Really? I wonder how. Cruz Fernandez tells us how dumpster diving can be a really big help. Dumpster diving is illegally scavenging through commercial or residential waste to find items that have been thrown away by their owners but may be useful to someone else. Or as the saying goes, once man's trash is another man's treasure. Dumpster divers collect items such as clothing, furniture, food, and similar items in a good working condition. Young and old people can practice dumpster diving just like a Jersey Village High School student does. She shared with us her experience. Okay, well, I started dumpster diving when it was one summer. And I had nothing to do with all my friends. So we decided to go jump in a dumpster. And then we just started finding really interesting things. And so ever since then, I just like doing it. I've found some iPods, some cases, a lot of food. I mean, I don't eat it personally. Um, I have found some blankets and a lot of like, just things, I guess. So um, we found some new boots. They're uh, CT boots, so those are the expensive kind of boots, you know. Just like Tori, some people dumpster dive for fun and others dive for necessity. Some of the items thrown out have a high value and divers take advantage of this. 
there are some professional divers that can actually earn hundreds of thousand dollars per year. Popular locations that divers choose are electronic stores, high-end fashion, and food department stores. But not everyone has the same opinion. A lot of people do it out of necessity. There was someone dumpster diving right there as we came in on a dumpster at the restaurant there. So I've seen a lot of people do it. I lived in an apartment. You know, right there was a dumpster at the corner. And I'd see people throwing away furniture or whatever. Yeah, I used to get a lot of stuff out of there. Believe it or not, tools. I found, I once saw three frozen turkeys in the dumpster at the apartment. I mean, they were frozen. Somebody threw them away. A lot of people, especially when they move out, they get kicked out of the apartments, they leave all their stuff, they all get put in the dumpster. A lot of people dive through dumpsters to find food. I would try to find food elsewhere. I would go to shelters or something. I'm not against it because dumpster diving, which I have researched a little on it, it's more like people who, you know, go dunk, I mean, diving for collectible items, you know, like antiques, stuff like that. So that's I, my intake on it. So, yeah. It's nasty because people's garbage and God knows what else is in there. You know, I mean, if the boots are in there, great. I mean, they're, they're there for somebody else, not for me. People spend many hours just going through dumpsters to find their necessities. Even if dumpster diving may seem gross to some people, this is actually a way people to have fun while collecting items. Cruz Fernandez, JVTV News. Oh, boy, is it hot. You need to chill out. How? With a popsicle. Ariana Perez and Guadalupe Mosqueda show us how to make this tasty treat. Hi, I'm Guadalupe Mosqueda, <laughs> coming to you from JVTV, showing you how to make gummy popsicles. Now, to do this, you're going to need a popsicle container, often through a beaker, and top gummies. So first, you're going to get your Mountain Dew up to one cup. Now you move these to the side, like my ex-wife. And you take out these, and you put around three to four gummies in each, th each of them. Now you get your Mountain Dew and pour it all over. Make it rain up in here. It will take approximately 45 hours to freeze. As you can see, they are delicious. Thank you for joining me in this DIY. Many students face daily struggles, but one student has faced more than her fair share. Vanessa Halasteris tells us about her journey towards graduation. My name is Vanessa Halasteris, and I graduate from Jersey Village High School in 2015. The last time I saw my mother in person was probably when I was about four years old. After my mom and my dad had divorced, she had uh, married another guy. His name was Jeremy, and uh, he had realized that the environment I was in with my mother was extremely unhealthy, so he proceeded to drop me off at my grandparents' house, and from then on until I was about 12 years old, I was living with my grandparents. While I was at St. Agnes, I was having some issues with my significant other, and uh, which led to a little bit of a dispute between the dean and I, and uh, after a couple of weeks, I ended up here at JV. I applied to Savannah College of Art and Design my junior year of high school. I was really interested in pursuing a film career, and uh, I knew that that was one of the top colleges in uh, the nation, so I thought, hey, I probably won't get in, but might as well give it a shot, right? When I got to Jersey Village High School, um, I joined the JVTV program, and it honestly sparked the influence that I had to keep going on in my life. I went from having practically no food on my dinner table to driving an Audi A4 at the age of 18 and having all the food that I could ever imagine I would have. Even though my life may not have started out that great, I'm on my way to creating a better future for myself, uh, one that I could have never imagined I would ever have. It's nice to see JVHS students following their dream and succeeding in what they do. We're very proud of our peers and all of their hard work. That's all for this newscast. JVTV is on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. For Miranda Cuellar and the entire JVTV news crew, I'm Keitha Hanks. Thanks for watching.